In this video, we're going to learn how to implement operator overloading using friend functions in C++. First, we'll go over operator overloading, and then we'll go over friend functions. And then we'll use friend functions to implement operator overloading. The first thing we'll do is make a simple class called counter to represent counters. Counters will have a single private member variable. It's going to be an int called count, and that's going to represent the count of the counter. We'll make some public member functions, including a constructor, to set the initial count. So here we'll say counter int count colon count brackets count, and then open bracket close bracket. So our constructor is going to set the count member variable to the count int argument that's provided to it. We'll make some functions to output the count and to increment the count. So here we'll say void print and print is just going to output the count. We'll just say C out and then count followed by an end line. We'll make an increment function as well. That's going to increment the count. So we'll say void increment and then we'll add one to the count. We'll say count plus plus. Now we can make counter objects, increment them and print them. So down here we'll say counter, counter one, seven, counter one dot increment and then counter one dot print. And if we save this and run it, we'll get eight as output. So it seems to be working. We could make another counter object as well. So we could say, for example, counter, counter two. This one we'll set to, let's say three. Then we'll say counter two dot print. And if we save and run this, we'll get three as output and we get three. It would be nice if we could add together counters. So for example, if we could say counter, counter three is equal to counter one plus counter two. And with this counter being eight after incrementing it and this counter being three, we should get counter three as 11. But if we try to save and run this now, we get this invalid operands to binary expression counter and counter. And the problem is we're using this plus operator and the plus operator can work with things like ints and doubles. But to make it work with counter objects, we would need to implement operator overloading. We would need to overload this plus operator and provide a definition for it that works with counters. So what we'll do is provide that definition here. We'll say counter operator plus and then counter const and counter as a parameter. So here we're implementing operator overloading using a member function where the left operand of the plus operator is going to be the object for which this member function is called. The right operand is going to be provided to the function as an argument and the function is going to return a counter object where that object will be the result of the plus operator. So we'll make a new counter object and the new counter object is going to have the combined count of the left operand and the right operand. The left operand is the object for which this member function is running. So we can just use the member variable count directly. The right operand is that counter parameter. So we'll say counter dot count. Once we've created this new object, we'll just return it like this. So now down here, if we try to save and run a program, it actually works. We get a warning that we're not using our new counter object, counter three, but this addition operator actually worked. If we say counter three dot print and we save run this, we'll get a value of 11 here. So it is working. So that's how we can implement operator overloading with a member function. It's also possible to implement operator overloading with a friend function. But what's a friend function? So a friend function is a function that is not a member function of a class, but it has access to the private and protected members of that class. Let's make a simple friend function. First, we have to declare it inside of our class. We'll say friend void set to zero counter and counter. So this here is the declaration of the friend function. 
the class is being told that there's going to be a function called set to zero. It's going to have a void return type. It has a reference to a counter as a parameter. And this function is going to be a friend, which means this function can access the protected and private members of this counter object here. Let's provide a definition of this function now. All this function is going to do is just set the counters count to zero. We actually delete the friend keyword here when we provide a definition of the function and we'll say counter dot count is equal to zero. Now what's interesting here is that count is a private member of objects of type counter. We can't normally access that outside of the class, but with a friend function, we can. Now, because we have a reference here for our parameter, when we modify this object's count member variable, it's going to modify the actual object that was passed to this function. Let's try it out. So with counter three here, we know it's 11. We'll try calling set to zero and we'll pass in counter three. Then we'll try printing out counter three again. So we'll save this and run it and we get a count of zero. So our friend function is able to modify the protected and private members of the class for which it is a friend. Now it's important to note that it's not a member function of counter. We don't call it like a member function. We don't say counter three dot set to zero and then counter three. If we try this, we'll get an error. It says no member named set to zero in counter. It's just a friend of the class counter. So we call it like this instead of like a member function. Now we can also implement operator overloading with a friend function. So we'll comment out this member function that we currently use to overload the plus operator. Otherwise there would be an ambiguity between this function and our new friend function. Then we'll supply a friend function instead. First we'll have to declare the friend function. We'll say friend counter operator plus, and this time we're going to have two counter parameters. We'll say counter C1 counter C2. And again, we'll supply a definition of this function down here. So we'll paste the function prototype down here, and then we'll delete the semicolon, and then we'll delete the friend keyword as well. Now, because this function is a friend function, it can access the protected and private members of the counters C1 and C2. So we could say int new count is equal to c1.count plus c2.count. We could then return a new counter object with this new count. And this would then be another way of overloading the plus operator, this time using a friend function. And our code down here, where we add together counter one and counter two to create counter three, this will work the same as before. So if we save and run our program, we're going to find that counter three has a count of 11, the same as before. And now we've used a friend function to overload the plus operator. There are some situations where we need to use a friend function to implement operator overloading. So when we use a member function to implement operator overloading, there's an assumption that this member function is being called for the left operand of that operation, in this case, addition. But it doesn't have to be that way. We could implement operator overloading such that the left operand is something else, say like an int. For example, what if we want to multiply a counter by an int value? So a counter with a count of five, when multiplied by 10, would give us a counter of count 50. Let's go over an example of that. We'll make another friend function. We'll declare it here. We'll say friend counter operator multiplication int m counter counter. So this friend function is going to return a counter, but its left operand is going to be an int this time, as opposed to another counter object. Let's apply a definition of this function now. We'll copy this and we'll paste it down here. 
And again, we'll delete the semicolon and we will delete the friend keyword. And for this function, we're gonna compute the new count using M. So we're gonna say int new count is equal to the int M times the counter objects count. And this here is gonna be the right operand. It's gonna be a counter object. The left operand is gonna be an int. And we're taking that int M, we're multiplying it by that counter objects count to compute a new count. Then we're gonna return a new counter object with this new count. Let's try using this new overloaded multiplication operator. So we'll make a new counter. We'll say counter, counter four, and this time we'll set the count to be, let's say five. Then we'll say counter, counter five is equal to counter four. And we're gonna multiply counter four by 20. Counter four is gonna be the right operand. 20 is going to be the left operand. Then we'll try to output counter five. We'll say counter five, dot print here, and we should get 100. And we'll save this and run it, and we do get 100. So here, we're using a friend function to implement operator overloading where the left operand is not a counter object. That's something we can't really do with a member function. With the member function, we had this assumption that the left operand was a counter object and that that object is the object for which this member function is actually running. That's why we're able to access the member variable count here like this. Now we could use a member function to implement operator overloading in this situation so long as the int was the right operand. So right now we've only implemented operator overloading of multiplication in the situation where the int is the left operand. So here, if we change this around to say times 20 here with 20 as the right operand, if we try to save and run this, we're gonna error. It says invalid operands to binary expression counter an int. We could implement operator overloading using a member function in this situation. Here we could say counter operator multiplication, and this time here we'll say int m. We'll compute the new count as count times m, where we're able to use the count member variable because the assumption is this function is being called as a member function for the left operand in this multiplication operation. Then we could return a new counter object using this new count. And then down here, when we use the int value as the right operand of this multiplication, if we save and run this, it'll now work and we get 100 back as our new count. So sometimes we actually need to use a friend function to implement operator overloading. So we can't use a member function for operator overloading when the left member is not a class or it's a class we can't modify. Notably, we can't overload the stream insertion operator less than less than the operator that we use with cout as a member function, because doing so requires a function with the stream insertion operator as the left operand. C++ also doesn't allow these operators to be overloaded using a friend function. So we can't use a friend function for assignment, function call, or the arrow operator. So there are some situations where we can't use a friend function and we have to use a member function instead. So this has been how we can implement operator overloading using friend functions in C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com 
where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.